Hello everyone, I hope you guys are doing well. My name is Sarah, I'm the founder and CEO of Naya Skincare. Welcome to my YouTube channel where we're gonna meet regularly to talk about everything and anything that is really happening in the beauty industry in terms of new ingredients, claims, new launches, inky lists, etc. or any concerns you have or questions you have that I can address during these sessions. So welcome every one of you. Thank you so much for being here, for supporting my channel and that you're enjoying these sessions. And if you have any questions, leave a DM below or drop us an email. What are we going to talk about today? Today we're going to talk about skincare mistakes. And the skincare mistakes that you are doing was probably without really knowing that you might be doing them. So let's get started. Why I want to talk about skincare mistakes today is because there have been a lot of sales on and brands are like throwing products at you that you you are meant to be catching and I want you to make sure to duck when there's a product that might not be worth catching and that you can actually identify which product is good for you which one you should be using and you already know as well if there's a lot of sales on and some brands are continuously doing sales you know the quality isn't the best either so steer clearly away from those ones but let's get started with the number one skincare mistake that I have been seeing. And the number one skincare mistake is really not having a focus in your skincare routine. And what do I mean by that, by focus? The focus is really that you are clear on what you want to achieve when you're adopting a skincare routine. A lot of times when I speak to my customers and I ask them, why are you using an exfoliating toner, an exfoliating serum, like a moisturizer, an oil, a diaper cream and something else and different things on top of your face? Nine out of ten times the answer is not to age and I'm thinking good luck that's just not gonna happen we should be all really be grateful that we are aging that we are gonna live longer and that you we are hopefully living longer in a healthy way as well and our skin can look healthy and younger and glowy till we're like 90s and I don't mean it in a bad way or in a mean way or any in a judgmental way. I just say it because there is an obvious answer to this. You do need a focus on what you want to focus your skincare on. Is it pigmentation? Is it specific fine lines? Is it redness? Is it blemishes? Etc. Because only then when you really know what you want to target and you want to focus on, use the specific products that will help you achieve that goal and then consistently are using them to achieve that goal and get closer to that goal. And then consistency is really key here that consistently over the next two months, three months, I using that routine and see the changes happening and building a foundation and everyday simplified routine has never failed me. So give that a go. Number two, listening to your skin. And you're now like, what is she talking about listening to your skin? When I say listening, I really mean feel your skin, like check in with yourself, take time out of your day when you do your morning routine or most likely in your evening routine where you might have a little bit more time to really check in and listen to your skin. How does your skin feel? Does it feel calm? Does it feel balanced? Does it feel maybe irritated? Is it itchy? Is it dry? Is it oily? Like how does your skin feel like? What does your skin feel like? And Based on that, you need to adapt your skincare routine. So if your skin feels irritated, is red, the last thing that you want to do is actually apply a retinoid on it or like an exfoliating acid. When it's irritated already and it's itchy and it's burning, you have a burning sensation, the last thing you want to do is apply an active that might reinforce that sensation. So do make sure you're checking in with yourself. So if you are applying your cleanser and you're giving yourself a beautiful massage, that's what I usually do in the evening. I apply our everyday 
cleansing oil and then I really massage and I massage for 60 seconds so I really get all the grime off and then I check in with myself I check in how I like my toes how are my legs how is my stomach how are my arms but how is my skin everywhere feeling as well before I then proceed to the next step because I do not then apply a retinoid or an exfoliant if my skin feels irritated it feels like has a high level of sensation I put something on that is calming that is helping the skin to repair to calm down and sort of get a good night's sleep so give this a go and let me know how you get on to really start listening and feeling your skin I know it's super hard in particular nowadays where you have so much noise going on but it's even more important with all that noise going on that you stand still for a second and that you really sort of check in with yourself how you are doing how your skin is doing number three adapting your skincare routine what do i mean by that so if you have dry skin or oily skin your skin has different requirements when the environment around us changes so if you're living in a countryside and then you're moving to the city or if you have dry and oily skin and then you're going on holiday somewhere really cold or dry or like a uh, humid your skincare routine changes accordingly as well so if you are having for example an oilier skin and you are absolutely fine with using like a sort of your uh, cleanser then you're using a serum and you're using a day cream you might be then going to a more humid environment and all you need is your serum after the cleanser and that's all good you know because you need to adapt your skincare like it's a humid environment and you might not need that much that you previously needed the same is coming when you have dry skin if you have dry skin and you're in a dry environment you might need to add a lot of hydration into your skincare routine to build up these levels of hydration but if you're in a humid environment you might need not that much hydration as you might need in a drier environment I know it can be very complex and confusing do check out my previous um, video about how you're layering hydration into your skincare routine and I hope Hope that will help you to answer some of those burning questions that might be coming up right now number four spending 300 euros or even like 200 euros on a hyaluronic acid serum that is just robbery it's a crime it's stupidity don't do it if you have money to waste let me know and I'll send you my bank details because spending 300 euros on a hyaluronic acid serum is absolutely unnecessary. Let's talk about number five, my favorite and which one I've been preaching for a very, very long time. Go slow and steady, because slow and steady, we know it all will win the race. It's been an absolute wild west out there. And I think after the pandemic, it got even a little bit worse. So in particular now when the european uh, cosmetic regulation actually needs to get involved to put restriction on uh, usage limits that's when you know something is not quite right so recently uh, the european cosmetic regulation wanted to implement some new um, regulations um, and legalize them now and not just make them as a suggestion but really legalizing them now uh, last year so uh, q4 in 2023 it got delayed and now has moved to Q1 uh, 2024 and brands will have a period of like up to two years to change certain um, percentage of certain ingredients that they have in their products. One of these ingredients is of course retinol. That one is only allowed as a brand to formulate with 0.3% of retinol. There has been an absolute wild west going on out there with like 0.3, 0.5, 1 percent and then more and more and more and more um, and then in particular if you're a customer that is going to a dermatologist and then getting as well uh, retinol prescribed to then additionally on top of that using retinol from over the counter you can just imagine what kind of headache that creates on your skin and what kind of skin damage that creates in particular when we're living in a world where skin cancer is on a steady rise so 
That's why then the European Cosmetic Regulation got involved and put an end to that and said, no, you can only now use 0.3% on your face. It's even less when you have retinol in a, in a body uh, product, but for your face it's not 0.3%. And I absolutely applaud it. And I think that's the right thing to do because it's about protecting customers. It's about protecting their skin and making sure they have healthy skin for the long run. So at Naya, we have always use 0.3% of retinol in our Kakai Oil Plus A, which is currently going through a very exciting upgrade and I can't wait to share more with you. So make sure you sign up to our newsletter on our website. Um, but yeah, that's where we are now with retinol. And you do want to go slow and steady. Retinol is a very, very powerful ingredient. You don't need a lot of it. You have to consistently use something. You can't just uh, expect to use something once or twice and your skin is incredibly. No, you have to use something consistently on a regular basis to really see the impact and to really see the changes. Do check out my blog about this as well because there are also other ingredients that will have been impacted like kojic acid, other types of retinoids etc and there are some more so you are aware as well what you have to look out for and you also are in charge of your own skincare journey. So do check out the blog post on our website I will link it into the comments below number six over exfoliating I have no idea what happened but I think it really started off during the pandemic and everyone was sort of at home and maybe a little bored and get more into their skincare and all of a sudden all these exfoliating sort of products kicked off and everyone just like sort of started applying it exfoliating toners exfoliating serums like you name it like it was applied onto your face and we still seem have not taken off our foot of the gas in terms of when it comes to exfoliating the trick is really exfoliating intentionally, which is really a crime, or exfoliating unintentionally, which is really a tragedy. The thing is like there are a lot of products out there that actually have exfoliant acids in them and they're not marketed or not communicated to the customer as an exfoliating product. So you as a customer really need to be aware of, need to turn around that product to look at that inky list and need to be aware of the key exfoliating acids as well that are going around in the market. The challenge with that as well is guess what? Many brands are using exfoliating acids as a preservative system. That is then when the problem starts. And the exfoliant acids that I'm referring to is glycolic acid, lactic acid, mandelic acid, salicylic acid. I mean, these are your classic exfoliant acids. And if you are then using an exfoliator with one of these classic acids then you're using exfoliating toner then you're using like an exfoliant serum and you're doing that twice a day that is causing havoc to your skin because it's just way too much to tolerate for your skin and then you really need to take a step back to really look at your products and look okay what what is in these products and how many times do i want to exfoliate so take really the foot of the gas pedal so you don't overdo it and make sure it's aligned with your focus because ideally you really only want to like three to four times absolute max 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 and if you have sensitive skin you want to actually exfoliate far less um, than three to four times probably only one to two times so check out your products have a look what's in there and make sure you don't over exfoliate that is the time when I really curl up like a little fetus into the corner and just see all these like get ready with me sort of Instagram uh, video reels and where they're using an exfoliator as well in the morning. If you want to exfoliate, do it in the evening. If you are exfoliating in the morning, you're shedding all the dead skin cells, all that additional protection layer actually from your skin. And in particular during this period now where we're changing season, where it becomes warmer, where the sun is coming out the UV index is increasing you want additional protection not just from your sunscreen but also the dead skin cell that can protect your skin barrier a little bit as well and you don't want to expose it in particular if you have sensitive skin you want an additional layer to protect your skin barrier number seven I think we are now <laughs> over washing I'm not sure what happened but at one point it was like 
just wash your face, wash your face, clean your face, and it has to be squeaky clean um, to the point that it's really dry and parched, and then only it was clean. Your skin doesn't have to be squeaky clean and you won't achieve it to be squeaky clean because you have to imagine your skin like a valley. There are hills, there are little uh, valleys in there and you won't get into each of these grooves anyways. But you do need to clean it in the evening to get rid of all the grime, rid of all the makeup that you might have applied, the mascara as well in particular, uh, and before you start your skincare evening routine. But just don't overdo it. So if you have a tendency to have drier skin or you have normal skin and you have no problems at all or also sensitive skin, I would um, suggest and try not to wash your face in the morning, just sort of like water in your, in your face and then off your you go with your morning routine ready to start the day. Try that and then in the evening you can do a proper wash when you have been out and about, the pollution is on your face, all sorts of other grime and dirt is on your face to then really properly wash your skin before you're applying your evening skincare routine. Number eight, not changing your pillowcase. I mean it's one of those things where you're like how many times are you actually wearing your underwear? You're changing it every day so and the same really applies with the pillowcase like you are sleeping on this like for eight hours in a day um, everything is on it like if you were you don't always wash your hair for example in the evening so if you have been out and about and you're coming then so all the stuff that is still stuck in your hair might be going onto the pillowcase you're sweating during the night so that is sort of going onto your pillow because you might be drooling as well at night um, if you have a particular deep sleep and that is on your pillowcase and you don't want then the next evening again place your face that you just freshly cleaned onto the mixture of things um, that can then cause potentially like blemishes or other problems. So that's why you want to regularly clean on your pillowcase. If you don't want to clean it then at least just swap the pillow around um, and then use it at least twice or something but do regularly change your pillowcase it will help with calming the uh, irritations and calming the blemishes on your face so number nine and that's really the last one and i didn't want to just start with that one because i'm sure you guys would otherwise roll your eyes at me and you're like oh here you go again and then just drop off so here's the last one apply sunscreen yes not wearing sunscreen is probably the number one skincare mistakes you do so much damage to your skin not wearing sunscreen and it will come out that when you go older all of a sudden you have all that damage to deal with when you are older so make sure you're wearing that sunscreen and you wear it regularly on your face as well ideally a high SPF ideally an SPF of 50 particular as well in spring when the season is changing your skin is again getting used to these harsh rays and hasn't built any protection up that you are applying a high SPF on it. Why is it so important? The sun is really causing you a lot of issues. The sun is in particular the UVA uh, uh, rays. They are causing for the collagen to break down in your skin but also the sun is causing you pigmentation. So the changes in your color, you don't have an even skin tone anymore but you start to have darker spots in various pigmentation areas around your face. What the sun can also do is weaken your blood vessels and that's when your skin will appear more red. That is one of the things that probably no one shares but that's also a key problem that the sun can create and that's why it's just so crucial to really wear sunscreen and don't rely just on the sunscreen that maybe in the moisture is in or maybe in a makeup is in. It's just not strong enough. Do you really get a dedicated sunscreen that you can apply onto your face on a regular basis and that you enjoy Enjoy wearing it. I know how hard it is to find like a sunscreen that you actually enjoy wearing. They sometimes feel really tacky or sticky or they feel like they're drying out your skin etc. Do check out our sunscreen, our SPF 15. It's very lightweight. It's a pleasant feeling to feel on. It has a beautiful smell and I really enjoy wearing it. You don't at all feel it like actually wear the sunscreen and all I need is a serum underneath either our Aura or our Glow Serum and then I'm ready to go and start the day. 
So I'm thinking if you are investing in your skincare, if you are putting a lot of effort into your skincare routine, you are listening to all these videos, etc., and you're still listening to the video, then wear the damn sunscreen. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you took notes. I hope you got some insights and um, you, you learned something new as well. Um, I enjoyed making this video for you. If you do have any questions, drop us a DM below, leave a comment or drop me an email and I look forward to our next session together. You have a fantastic day and I see you soon. Bye.